Thank you. Thank you. Um, also traveling with me today is the director of the Missouri Department of Agriculture, Richard Fordyce. Um, <clears throat> he was saying that uh, it is a little closer for him to drive from his family farm to here than it is from Jeff City uh, to here. He's only about 90, 95 miles south of here, so uh, my director has uh, spent a great deal of time in, uh, in the northern part of Missouri and Iowa and brings a wealth of, of knowledge. Uh, I want to thank Craig and everybody for being with us today. It's, um, it's, it's nice to have a chance to, to talk about it as an issue that's important to Missouri. Quite frankly, I think important to our country. Uh, and for looking back now over the last 10 to 15 years, what a tremendous difference uh, biofuels have made in the economy uh, of rural Missouri and rural America. Uh, I want to especially thank Governor Branstead for being such a good neighbor and a gracious host, uh, a strong voice of the heartland, and from a personal sense been very helpful to me um, as we've worked on a number of matters together, and I look forward as, as vice chair and Heading up to chair with him as chair, a, a very, very close relationship as we continue to move this agenda forward. Uh, it's also my understanding that he has been released this morning from uh, the hospital, um, so I think we're going to have to probably lock the doors here to keep him from coming in. Um, but I am sure the governor will uh, visit all 99 counties again, and I'm sure he'll be uh, resuming his schedule soon. But we've had a chance to. Uh, to talk with their office and, and just to tell everybody he's, he's doing fine and, and, and back at it really, really quickly here. Now, Missouri is the home of 15 majority-owned ethanol and biodiesel plants and a top 10 producer of corn and soybeans. And Missouri continues to be a leader when it comes to fuels from the farm. And I'm very proud to be representing the Show Me State here for a few minutes with you all today. A few months ago, I toured Poet DSM's Next Generation Stelulosic Biofuel Ethanol Plant in Emmitsburg, a true milestone in the nation's road to clean fuels and sustainable agriculture, and oh, by the way, once again mixing science, technology, and agriculture. I think one of the things that a lot of people miss these days is the huge level of science and technology involved in agriculture. A lot of folks like to talk about engineering and science, but I quite frankly believe uh, that farmers, producers, and their affiliates in our state are leading the way and in our nation are, are leading the way when it comes to embracing science and technology for better outputs. But you think about clean fuels and sustainable agriculture, some of this stuff we kind of take for granted now, at least maybe our kids do. But when you think about it, it's a pretty amazing idea. Harnessing the energy contained in our homegrown crops and turning it into clean burning fuel for our cars and trucks. Earlier this month, I was at the Detroit Auto Show. Now, for those of you that aren't tremendously familiar with Missouri's role at auto, we're basically the center of the rebirth of the auto industry. But more importantly than that, we make the top three trucks for Motor Trends Truck of the Year the Canyon, the Colorado, and the F-150. So good chance is you are driving or will be very soon what we make in Missouri, and we're glad to export that to you all uh, and continue to work to make sure that technology, I, I, especially, folks, that, that new 150 is uh, incredible. The two Canyon and Colorado, pretty amazing vehicles. But we are the pickup truck capital as far as manufacturing of the world. That Ford plant at Clay Como, We'll soon have more vehicles rolling off the line at that plant than any other Ford plant in the world. Um, so when you, uh, I also say that uh, in our state, when you buy vehicles we make in our state, uh, two things about those vehicles you like. You like to be able to push your right foot down and things to happen, um, and you like to be able to pull things. So the bottom line is that uh, we're the pickup truck capital of the world that I hope you all will continue to keep that demand up. But we also grow a lot of corn. Uh, and I was reminded that more than a century ago, like I say when I was at the Detroit Auto Show, the original Model T Ford ran on ethanol as well as petroleum. So as we met with the Ford research folks, it was just interesting to see that, that cycle coming back on around. Ford thought that by the 1920s, America would be making fuel out of all kinds of crops. Now, it took quite a bit longer for us to realize Henry Ford's vision but today, thanks to many people in this room, we have come a long way. Over a decade ago, Governor Branstead and my colleagues in the Governor's Biofuel Coalition launched an aggressive advanced biofuels research program and then proposed and fought for passage of renewable fuel standards. Companies like Poet, DuPont, 
at Genoa and others like them began construction of advanced biofuel plants, putting thousands of Americans to work building and running these next generation facilities. Last year, America obviously produced more ethanol than ever before. Farmers and biofuel refiners produced a record 14 billion gallons of ethanol last year. This year, a record-breaking harvest paired with new and expanded biorefineries will add millions of gallons in annual production capacity. The increased use of biofuels has provided well-documented benefits to farmers, consumers, and our rural communities. Biofuels provide relief at the pump. They reduce our dependence on fossil fuels from less friendly parts of the globe. Let me say as a Missourian how, how much difference that makes. You all know that we don't generally when it comes to sports and a lot of things, get along with Kansas that well. Iowa and Missouri are kind of like Canada and the United States. Iowa, uh, I mean, Kansas is in a whole different different deal. But I'll, hear, I'll tell you in public right now, I would rather buy ethanol or biodiesel from Kansas than oil from the Middle East. Okay, So you can see where the standard is. We're, <clears throat> we're at a level... I mean, and once again, another part of that discussion, I think all of us have a responsibility to continue this discussion. I mean, literally over the last seven or eight years, we have become a country far more economically independent on oil. We, we do not bring it all in from the Middle East. We're not susceptible to the price controls of a few people in another part of the world. We have worked hard kind of on a, all of the above energy thing that the politicians talk about 10 years ago to make sure we have clear ways to provide energy ourselves. And now is not the time in any way, shape, or form to back up from that. We need to continue to push forward. It has a, it, it's not an accident that we're seeing gas prices where we are. It's not an accident that we're seeing production levels where we are. It's not an accident that there's real choice and real competition in all sorts of things energy-wise. But if we take our foot off the pedal in any way, shape, or form in a biofuel side, that competitive world out there gets a little less competitive, and we see the spike up of prices and the international matters that come. Once again, we have been supportive in our state not only of the biofuels, and I'll talk about that obviously, but also other North American energy sources. Uh, last year, for example, we completed a project for Enbridge Pipeline to come across our state, which is fine. We just have to continue to work as North American energy independence so that energy is not a geopolitical bludgeon to be used against us. Instead, it's a technological export and domestic energy producing policy that can make sure we keep our own destiny in our own hand. Now, this coalition has done a really good job. You know, we all know that the fuels burn cooler and cleaner, reduce smog and carbon monoxide emissions, and improve air quality. We really all know that biofuels create jobs and boost demand for our crops, which strengthens rural communities. The coalition's governors have had great success supporting new biofuels markets that have allowed the domestic biofuels industry to thrive over the last 20 years. For example, as was mentioned, in our state last year, despite opposition from special interests, we moved forward with a rule to allow gas stations to offer E15, giving consumers more options at the pump and another boost to our renewable fuels industry. Today, we must step up our efforts to ensure consumer fuel choice and the growth of domestic sustainable biofuels just as we have done successfully so many times before in this organization's history. Opening the nation's first commercial-scale cellulosic production facilities was a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment and proved positive of how the renewable fuel standard is helping spur the development of new feedstocks and new technology. Last year, however, the EPA proposed a rule that would reduce the amount of ethanol used in the nation's transportation fuels just as these new plants were coming online. It was the wrong approach at the worst time. And I was proud to stand with Governor Branstead and others in strongly urging the EPA to reconsider this ill-conceived plan. As a result of these efforts, EPA postponed the release of the rule until later this year, 
but we cannot let up. This is a critical time for our industry, and I'm very proud to be here to lend my voice to the chorus of voices on both sides of the aisle, calling on the EPA to support a strong renewable fuel standard and a strong rural economy. Governor Branstad and I see every day the profound positive impacts the biofuel industry has on our states. We are also reminded of the extraordinary untapped economic and environmental benefits that biofuels can provide if we overcome the obstacles facing us and keep moving forward. While government can't grow crops or refine feedstocks, it can foster an environment that supports the use of those products to create a better America. America knows how to win because we're not afraid to lead and follow an ambitious plan. Our history of leadership in biotechnology and agriculture is just one example of that competitive spirit. And because of that leadership, we are the world's leader today in the production of biofuels. The renewable fuel industry continues to deliver a fuel that's in the best interest of our country and our climate. Together, we can create more jobs, a cleaner environment, and a safer, more secure nation. We have a good plan, quite frankly, a great plan. All we need to do is stick to it. So in conclusion, before I get to hear from some other folks here, just three things. First of all, I want to thank Governor Branstad for his work and wish him Godspeed in his quick recovery from short uh, illness. I look forward to seeing him very, very soon. Number two, this is an important time. We, we can't, we got to keep our eyes on the ball right now. There are forces out there, which I felt on this E15, which quite frankly, it doesn't seem that complicated. You know, providing an option for consumers at the pump doesn't seem like something that would be that difficult a thing to do. We talk about that a lot in this country, providing consumers with energy choices. But we had to have a pretty good knockdown drag out just to get that done. And the third thing is continue to embrace science and technology and agriculture. I mean, we have got to really explain time and time and time again how important it is that the heartland provide its part of energy independence for our country and how the demand for our crops leads to international independence for us in energy. Extremely important to continue to make those connectors uh, in the years that come forward. It's an honor to represent the state here in the Biofuels Conference. I wish you the best for your time here. Uh, and we look forward to continuing to be very, very closely involved in the growth of what's been an incredible, incredible scientific agriculture uh, payoff uh, in the heartland and for America. Thank you, and God bless.